yes, welcome to yet another episode of Dance Sport 256, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be catching us live. Today, it's another pretty year show. Uh, we are going to be talking more about the demand of dance sport in schools. Uh, since uh, dance sport is under Ministry of Education and Sports, every school uh, is compulsory to have dance sport. Welcome to the show. Today, I'm going to be still hosting uh, more of the officials from the Uganda Dance Sport Federation talking about more on dance sport as we detail more on how the qualifications of uh, dance sport in schools and of course what are the necessities yeah what do you need okay for dance sport to be uh, in your school so that you can qualify for nationals as well to go to the other international level mc Chia is my name the host of dance sport 256 and we are going to be coming back don't get reset this is dance sport 256 <laughs> Just joined me, uh, the gentleman from uh, UDSF, and of course on my right hand, Mr. Regan, Administrator Regan, and of course on my left hand side, it's uh, Coach Sheriff, uh, Mr. Regan Sanji Sokulava. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for visiting us once again. Yeah. Uh, we are very happy to share with you okay. today's episode. Thank okay. you. Uh, Mr. Coach Sheriff, uh, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much. I'm humbled to be here once again. Yeah. And uh, we are here for another episode to share more knowledge about this dance. Sport. Okay. Uh, today we are going so much more in English because last episode Twali Twaji Kulanga is more of Luganda, but this time around we are glowing globally. <laughs> so today we are going to be tackling more of the national importance when it comes to dance sport. So I will begin with you, Mr. Regan. So for schools to be part of dance sport, uh, basically, because being a new sport and uh, we are having uh, another calendar of sports. So, let you enlighten for us what it takes for any school outside there, because I know many of the students and many of the people right there in primary would love, and everyone, since dance sport is a sport for all, would love to join. What does it take for any school to be part of dance sport? Oh, thank you, Chie. Uh, to begin with, uh, you'll allow me to, first of all, to take you back on uh, how dance sport has been able to, to be introduced in schools, how it has been uh, welcomed by the several schools, both primary and secondary. Okay. So uh, when you look back in 2020, 2020, 2022, that's last year, yeah. this is uh, when uh, the Federation began on the campaign on uh, how to introduce the sport into schools, mm. which schools, and uh, which uh, which disciplines are to be introduced in schools because you have to remember that uh, we have many disciplines around 10 of them but uh, at the moment the federation is looking at uh, three major disciplines that's a uh, breaking popping and afro uh, but in addition to that we have in ballet in some schools we have in contemporary dance in some schools and then some some other schools are are, are interested in uh, the discipline of Latin and ballroom. Okay. Of course, uh, the likes of Nyakasura, uh, the likes of uh, St. Catherine, uh, that's Lila, those are into Latin and ballroom. Okay. So, but uh, on a larger scale, we are many of the schools are targeting and uh, they are much interested on the, on, on the other side of urban dances, okay. the likes of breaking, popping, and afro. Okay. So, uh, but for any school which is there out there, uh, be, be it primary, secondary, or university, uh, of course, we are very aware that. Uh, the students are interested in the school, in, in the sport. Yeah. They want to dance, mm -hmm. they have the talent, yeah. but uh, given the dynamics of the sport, mm -hmm. there are some changes that are, are comes with it. Okay. So first of all, uh, we are working with uh, first the PE teachers and the sports teachers in these schools mm -hmm. to s first to get the knowledge of the sport. Mm -hmm. Uh, these are uh, through trainings, workshops, so that, bef so that by the time we bring this sport to, the, to their students, okay. They, they are the patrons, they know what it needs, how, how they can differentiate it from the entertainment and how they can uh, be able to uh, uh, put it into practice, in, both in the PE lessons and then on the co-curricular activity. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sheriff, as a coach, uh, a coach of dance sport, tell me, um, how many disciplines uh, do you take when you are to go and train at school? Yeah? 
because I've seen, for example, like Nyakasura. Nyakasura is a school that is more interested in two Latin and ballroom. Exactly. Yeah. So as a coach, a professional coach and a coach of uh, dance sport, tell me uh, about that, that. How can someone go about that or a school? Okay, thank you, my dear host. Uh, as a coach, first, different schools have different traditions. Mm. Like you've stated it, Nyakasura, they're into the Latin and ballroom. Yeah. That is their thing. Yeah. But again, the sport is wide. It has several disciplines. Mm. Yes, their strongest discipline could be Latin and ballroom. Mm. But again, you have to introduce in something new. Because regardless of the talented students that can do Latin and ballroom, mm. there are also those who can do popping. There are also those who can do breaking, mm. and there are also those who can do Afro. But still, their strongest discipline is yeah. Latin and Borum. So you put a lot of energy on that because they have to maintain their tradition. But again, also you have to pull up mm. the other to follow along with the Latin and Borum. So you give at least basics of every discipline mm. to the several students that have different interests. We all notice and preferences differ. Mm. Those who like Latin and ballroom, they are there, but there are also those who love breaking, Afro, and popping. Okay. So it is upon to you as a coach to identify who are interested in a certain discipline, and you begin the foundation basics of the dance and introducing them to the wider knowledge of the dance discipline. Can't a school specialize that for us, uh, we are more of Afro, our culture is Afro and we wouldn't like to maybe engage with the other disciplines like make, maybe breaking or popping. Mr. Regan, that is for you. Yeah, uh, it's a, the, school, the school has a choice. They can, they can specialize. They can be like, no, for us we want this discipline. Yeah. Again, it's the other. It's, very, it's okay. And uh, what, what, what we give is a variety of disciplines as yeah. a federation. Yeah. But then it's the decision of the school to decide which disciplines they want to compete in. Yeah. But of course uh, you may find that in, in, in a school you may find those students who would want popping mm. are not Afro. Okay. Uh, so uh, the school may, could be limiting mm. its uh, students uh, from competing in, in another discipline okay. in case they limit that they're they, 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 they abandoning a, a, a popping or breaking. Mm. So it's advisable that uh, a school at least takes on at least three disciplines mm. so that all the students yeah. can find where to fall. Mm. Yes. So, some Mr. Coach Sheriff, some, some schools are so religious, you find like maybe uh, the Chibuli uh, Muslim school. How can we go about this? For example, uh, we look at maybe the, 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 the attires, the dress code of their religious uh, culture. Let's talk about this. Uh, our sport or our this activity that we do is purely sport. And uh, sport is an activity that you participate in with your whole body. Yeah. So these are religious schools. We advise and most, 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 most times encourage that all these athletes that participate in our dance, they wear track suits. Okay. So track suits is a very good decent wear and it allows these athletes to execute their moves, yeah. execute their physicality, yeah. and they are flexible. They give them a lot of ease during the activity of dance sport. Yeah. So I believe with all these Muslim communities, Catholic communities, Adventists and other communities, the dress attire of a track suit is a very good attire. It, uh, it enables, uh, it gives a very clear image of what true sport is. And also upon the dress code, we also encourage these athletes to have sportsmanship. So as long as we are having entertainment, we also have to execute sportsmanship. We show love to each other that this is an activity yeah. where one has to win mm -hmm. and another has to lose. lose. So it is not a win by all means yeah. or a lose by all. Mm -hmm. So we lose some yeah. and we we'll win some. Okay. So we try to incur in that much discipline into mm -hmm. the athletes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to uh, maybe uh, training, um, coaching these schools, let's talk about that element. Uh, can maybe a PE teacher in that school, particular school that uh, could come and does he need to come for lectures? Does he need to maybe Google, he watch tutorials on YouTube so that they can uh, well train the, 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 their students or pupils at school? Let's share about that. Yeah, on the issue of uh, PE teachers uh, becoming trainers, of course we are looking at that critically. Uh, uh, when you look at dance sport and, and uh, all its disciplines, this is a practical, it's a practical sport. 
uh, when you look at it, uh, it's nature. You have to be able to be, you have to be able to do certain moves to be able to train. Yeah. You must be able to, to have the, the right knowledge, yeah. both uh, uh, theoretically and then uh, practically. Yeah. So you realize the fact that uh, most PE teachers may be interested in the sport. Mm. They may be having the theoretical knowledge, yeah. but then the, the aspect of a uh, practicability yes. how can they do these uh, moves the top rock the uh, waves the slides yeah. it may bring uh, a lot of challenge so but uh, what we are encouraging are PE teachers and all schools who have uh, interested uh, PE teachers or uh, sports teachers uh, one we are attaching we are attaching uh, qualified dance trainers to these schools for a given period of time so that uh, these teachers can learn from these uh, qualified uh, trainers. Yeah. In the long run, they can be able to, to, to pick up the skill and then uh, transfer it to the learners. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, last year, you hosted uh, a debut of dance sport that was in Lira, um, that was Boroboro. Uh, let's talk about um, that previous one when it comes to uh, dance sport competition, the USS Games. So let's talk, first share about that one. How was it? And uh, of course, we are going to look forward of, on this year's uh, hostage. Uh, last year was a fantastic one. We had a very good uh, uh, competition. Yeah. We had a number of schools that yes. traveled all the way to Lira to have this competition. Uh, we would say it was the first time because in Guru it was more of an exhibition. But this time around, students traveled in their school buses dressed smart in their track suits and attires yeah. to come and compete. Yeah. So it was a variety of skill, a variety of courage and teamwork that was executed by these different students from the different schools yeah. trying to compete for a trophy of who takes it in the boys category and the girls category. Yeah. So the sport is spreading out very wide because um, we used to think breaking was for only the boys but at least we saw a number of girls trying to carry out these moves we thought it was kind of a hard dance but these students proved us yeah. that what a man can do a woman can do better yeah so we saw a lot of courage a lot of physicality and we believe for this coming year that we are going to organize this one is going to be more superb compared to the rest okay. because most of the students who came for these different other sports were like but i can try that one I can try that one. So I expect this year to be a more, 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 mm. more adventurous and more of great experience yeah. compared to the last one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, when we look at levels of education from primary, secondary, and, and as well the university, let's talk about the dance sport, the availability on, in all these levels, first and foremost. Are we more into right now secondary? Because last year we, we were there uh, for the USS Games. Let's share about that, Mr. Regan, for you. Uh, strategically, uh, we are still uh, focusing on the, at, at this level, first term, we are looking at uh, secondary schools yeah. and primary schools, yeah. uh, but universities are coming later on in the year, okay. around August, we are, uh, we, by the time we expect the, the first years in our universities, yeah. we shall be introducing the sport again to that level, but at, uh, in, in the first term, we are looking at uh, secondary schools and primary schools, most especially the secondary schools given their syllabus of PE yeah. because uh, we have a big slot there on their dance and aerobics uh, side topics. Yeah. So we are giving it a lot of emphasis mm. uh, alongside primary schools. But uh, in, later on in August, we shall be heading to the universities mm. uh, as we target the first years. Okay. Yes. Uh, coach Sheriff, as a coach, uh, as far as these disciplines are concerned, so let's talk about how, like, which approach are you focusing at as a coach? Is it uh, the average disciplines of all that you do, go and maybe give lectures or train these students or? Okay, first and foremost, as a coach, you have to have a plan. So before you go in to teach these students or teach these people in the community something, you have to come up with a drafted plan. So. You might decide to say that if today I'm going to teach breaking, you break down yeah. your breaking lesson of the day. Yeah. Breaking has four components. Which four components or, or two or three of the components are you measuring in for this session? Yeah. What are we beginning with? Yeah. But besides that, what I want these people to know yeah. and the rest of the community out there, this is a competitive sport. sport. 
dance has been there for leisure, uh, for passing time, but this time around this is a competitive sport. So we have the entertainment side of it where people just love to come and dance. Mm. But again, we have the other process that people don't want to see. Yeah. That is the field work. Yeah. The cones, the drills, the push-ups, the squats, the flog jumps, mm. that physicality part of yeah. the dance. Yeah. People tend to ignore that side. But as a coach, you need to open up yeah. to these athletes that have fallen in love with the dance. Yeah. They get to know that all these good moves, all this great energy and physicality yeah. comes from the other side of the dance, yes. which is the physical side of the dance. So you have to teach them before you begin to dance, you have to warm up. Yeah. Before you warm up, what did you do the day before? Yes. Because today you want to learn this flare, the flare needs something like five push-ups. Can yeah. you do the five push-ups? Mm. So if you can't do the five push-ups, no flare today. Yes. So as a coach, I be open and tell you, today you want an air flare, but the air flare wants a lot of push-ups. Yeah. If you can do 10, then we can try out with one. Yes. You'll love this Afro dance, these fast movements. These fast movements need a lot of flock jump. Yeah. You have to do some good rainbows. Yes. If the rainbows are not enough, the jump or the, the, that stepping will be a little bit tough. Yeah. So you have to build the physicality within the body yeah. so that we execute these dances. Okay. So the approach is open. You come open-ended. Yeah. So you tell them there is this beautiful part of learning the car move, yeah. but also to support that move to come out in a beautiful way, yeah. you have to do the physical exercise part yeah. of the dance okay. so that the body is ready mm. for this dance. Okay. So it applies to all the dances, yeah. whether breaking, mm. whether popping, whether afro, whether latin and standard, yeah. the physical side of the dance, yeah. those physical drills, all I have to tell to these athletes, they have to fall in love with the process, mm. not fall in love with what they see on the stage. Yes. Because what you see on the stage comes along with what has been done behind the stage. The stage. Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Regan, as we, we finalize uh, this episode, I want to know, so, so far this very year, l let's talk about the games that are, we are going to host mostly in schools. Yeah, what are we beginning with? Uh, what should uh, like anyone watching us expect when it comes to the dance sport calendar of this year? All right, uh, this year we are, uh, as many of you, you are aware that uh, most schools are receiving senior ones, senior fives. So we we, we are focusing on uh, uh, registering as many schools as uh, we can. Those who are interested in the sport. Uh, so that uh, by beginning of February, we are looking at how do we begin demonstrations in schools. Yeah. Because uh, as you know, people are hearing dance sports, schools are, schools are interested in dance sport, but they, they, they have to, to have a feel to see what exactly is dance sport. So we are, we, in, in our program, we are looking at a number of demonstrations yeah. in both secondary and primary schools. Yeah. Uh, we are looking at uh, demonstrations uh, in uh, schools around Kampala, schools in, uh, in Western Uganda, and schools in uh, Bugiso region in, in the March of February, sorry, in the March of March. So we, we are focusing on first demonstrations so that uh, uh, the students can have a feel of the sport. Mm -hmm. then, then, then following that, we shall be looking at uh, how do we organize competitions into, inside schools, yeah. maybe uh, at a, at a at uh, house level, mm -hmm. they have class levels, mm -hmm. because we, we, are see, we are focusing on how do we build capacity, how do we build numbers, how do you build uh, as many athletes as possible in a given school. Mm -hmm. So that uh, this process will take a while, probably the, the whole term, so that uh, the plan is that we, we want to try to see that by the end of uh, March and April, mm -hmm. schools have a, a num a, enough athletes to prepare them for the second term ussa ball games uh, as you are aware uh, the ussa gave us a slot in the ball games two yeah. not ball games one so we are going to use this the time we have in uh, the time of first term to prepare our schools and athletes to be to be as more competitive as possible to compete in ball games too yeah. so uh, we are using this period for training capacity building uh, training judges coaches both at national level but also in schools yeah. because uh, given the sport we are looking at uh, it has it, it has a number of uh, opportunities a, a student can decide to be a, a dj yeah. or can decide to be a, an mc yeah. or an athlete yeah. so we are looking at all these options when we go for demonstrations we we call out our students 
to to find where they fit. Yes. They, they, probably their interest may be into becoming judges, becoming uh, DJs or MCs, yeah. or even athletes. Yeah. So we are giving out all these opportunities so that the sport can grow from the lowest level mm -hmm. to the upest, to the top level. Yes. Yes. In Europe, a Ugandan judge went there and found the panel was full of young judges and he didn't expect this. So uh, I think it's better idea to groom like so much more as possible so long as someone is so interested in his caliber or his work of the journey. Thank you very much Mr. Regan. Thank you very much for sparing your time. This is ladies and gentlemen, this is Dance Sport 256. We come through every week with another new episode. Endeavor to subscribe on that uh, subscription button and of course we shall be updating you with more of Dance Sport. Dance Sport, a sport for all. MCGA is my name. Catch up next time.